Hi, I'm Sanjeev Niles from Sri Lanka, and you're watching the Channa 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 podcast. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of my podcast. Uh, we have a very special guest today joining all the way from Colombo. Uh, we have Mr. Sanjeev Niles joining the podcast. Hi, Sanjeev. Hi, 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 Chan. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Not too bad. Doing okay. <laughs> so it's a uh, so. Uh, how's the morning uh, so far? <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I was uh, all focused on getting prepped for this. So, uh, <laughs> right. Morning is good. Yeah. So Sanjeev, how is the situation in Sri Lanka right now with the you know with the pandemic and everything? Yeah, I think things things are looking up and getting better. So the vaccination is being administered. I think Sri Lanka has one of the highest rates of vaccination at the moment. Uh, so and it's obviously working because the number of cases are reducing. Mm. And uh, so the government is it, it's a bit messy in the sense it's not very convenient for everybody to get the vaccination, but there is a big drive and a lot of people are getting vaccinated. So things are improving and uh, the lockdown is I mean there is no lockdown. so but certain restrictions are still there so they are slowly easing those you know once things get uh, get better so i mean it it is i think a much better situation than we were in a couple of months ago right so how did the pandemic uh, personally affected you uh, uh yeah i think uh, definitely it was uh, so with my work i was able to continue to work from home so that wasn't uh, a major impact but i think overall just uh, in in the sense of uh, of uh, lifestyle and the music and stuff definitely there was a huge sort of uh, uh, block in the way so you couldn't do much you couldn't go out much and you know having doing any concerts and all was completely out of the question mm. so those things were a problem but that helped me sort of focus more on on uh, our increasing my the stuff that i do online Uh, recording most stuff at home and reducing them online so i focused on that because i knew that i couldn't if certain things out of my control i have to sort of you know not be too worried about that and focus on what i can do so yeah it was a, a tough period and you know always you know there are different impacts different you know family members that various problems and uh, certain friends have had some you know deep losses so it was it wasn't easy but i mean we are slowly getting through it i hope right uh, i i saw yesterday that uh, finally there was a concert yesterday right yes yes <laughs> were you there or <laughs> yeah yeah i went for it i went for it uh, it was definitely uh, refreshing to see that so hopefully you know there'll be more of that I, it's going to be happening every week i'll be performing next week at the at this event uh, so uh, hopefully you know that will lead to something uh, something more uh, more sustainable where there's more performances but i think that that's it's going to eventually happen so it's just a matter of time and anyway now it's happening every week so there'll be more stuff and uh, the crowd is limited to 200 at the moment but you know once things improve then maybe they can sort of reduce those restrictions yeah i mean especially the metal heads might be like you know they want to <laughs> they're looking forward to that <laughs> yeah. right all the rockers and you know yeah 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 <laughs> yeah for sure it was a huge release for some of them so they there like there are like other sort of other musical uh, sort of other clubs and all they have live music happening and people going to this i mean this is not for rock and metal but for the mainstream the covers sort of thing uh that has been happening for for a while now but for the for rock music i think this was the first uh, first thing up for a long after a long time yeah i think i mean this sort of uh, uh we shouldn't be taking for granted these things right <laughs> yeah yeah that's the thing so i mean it is important that people sort of are able to live their to live their life i mean obviously safety precautions need to be taken so you know uh, so hopefully you know with more people getting the vaccine things will improve so we need to have sort of life getting back to normal rather than trying to achieve this new normal thing which is i don't think is sustainable so hopefully right. we can get back to normal sooner rather than later yeah because we um, <clears throat> i mean we've been in this for like a year now so but yeah i know that's crazy but, that's, that's insane uh, i mean we have yeah. these kind but, of restrictions for a year is <laughs> we really don't know what what is the negative impact especially like you know towards mental health and you know 
there's so yeah. many negative things happening as well right which which really i don't think people really had time to look at all these uh, aspects right yeah yeah and i think the thing is the the sort of narrative is being controlled by a few people who keep on saying you know you know you if you don't take all these precautions you're going to die or you're going to make other people die and you know you have right. to wear a mask even if you step out of the house uh, like 5 meters out of the house you have to wear a mask and so you have to be very i mean and like so many families and kids and all that i mean kids not being able to go to school no interaction with other people Mm. they have lost a year of interaction with other you know <laughs> with other people so that's i think that's there is going to be negative impacts of that and uh, people don't pay any attention to it and you know they don't want to make the uh, uh, sort of uh, they don't want to highlight it but i think those things are going to have a huge impact so the sooner we get back to normal follow certain guidelines that that will uh, ensure safety but the sooner we get back to normal i think the better it is and because i mean what are we going to do say another 3 years another you know virus comes again now we're going to go into another one or two years of lockdown right that's, that's what we need to think about <clears throat> right so uh, sanjeev so uh, i i remember you from the rock company days because okay. uh, you were part of stone broke and i re- i distinctly remember this show that uh, you guys performed in uh, airport garden right in yes, Sidhu, yes. the concert <laughs> yes that was that was actually our in my opinion and even the rest of the band's opinion that was our best performance uh, in the during the short i mean in the short time that we played yeah. uh, we really loved them there were so many people who came up to us after that show and said that you were i mean so many strangers who we've never met before said that you know we really loved your music <laughs> right yes. right they yeah. didn't remember that <laughs> yeah because i'm i'm from nigambo so it was like a big deal for me to have like you know uh-huh. idu was very close so it's like <laughs> yeah those days concerts were not really happening in nigambo right yeah, so yeah. yeah that's true <laughs> um so sanjeev can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and like your earliest uh, memory of uh, music yeah so the uh, thing is so i'm a, i'm a christian so i've been brought brought up in a christian family so in our family sort of uh, obviously with the with the religion itself there's a lot of music involved with church and you know the various things and in our family also there were some you know some musical tradition so the first exposure to music was more the sacred the christian music uh, i mean not this modern christian music which you hear today more the you know there was sort of uh, the anglican church methodist church mm-hmm. kind of that kind of more sort of traditional christian music and uh, then of course you know my my uh, mother used to listen to uh, a lot of uh, different like modern mu- i mean mu- modern music for that time like abba and uh, the carpenters and every brothers and that kind of music so that was the sort of exposure that i had and then gradually as i as i you know started getting older i started exploring on my own and you know i first of all listened to the 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 pop music at the time 90s pop music was not too bad actually so you know it was quite interesting at yeah. that time and then you know i slowly got into rock and uh, of course the classical uh, classical music influence was there from quite early because i was singing in choirs and uh, i sort of started singing you know uh, my i mean for men you know that the voice cracks from boys voice to so i started singing like uh, a bass in in a in a choir at a very young age so the classical music side anyway i had like a lot of influence on that and then i you know the other types of music also like uh, like rock and then metal i started i started listening to more and exploring more and uh, sort of then you know with with uh, as a teenager and you know early 20s definitely i had i had sort of i had a very sort of wide array of of uh, exposure to music uh, different genres um, and there were certainly my favorites like i think classical music and sort of melodic metal was probably my favorite uh my favorite types of music so yeah that's that's how it went right so for the classical music outside of uh, sort of uh, christian uh, music so when did you sort of got, got into that uh, sort of you know classical and opera and that stuff yeah like so uh, like this so i had uh, my my uh, singing capability and technique was one thing that uh, was one thing that sort of i think made me kind of stand out a little bit so they knew that i had that that capability where you know the voice which which is able to articulate the music in a certain way which sounds you know classical and 
so not just the sacred music so then there was all the other the operatic and uh, all the the other uh, repertoire the there's you know different types of of classical music so yeah that music came so that that was sort of i think uh, so i was mostly in this doing the sacred music stuff but then later i think early 20s i started listening to more uh, classical stuff and then you know you had people like andrea bocelli coming along who sort of acted as a crossover artist between in the classical music and more mainstream music where he and he brought a lot of music which is uh, which normally normally people wouldn't have listened to but you know he made it cool he made uh, you know uh, certain music very very uh, sort of mainstream which people never listened to before right and so those things all, all all came i mean those things came into play so yeah i mean i have uh, i'm very very into operatic music and uh, various types of classical music which focuses on you know uh, especially my my kind of voice because especially with classical music they've listened they they've written music for different types of voices so for my range and my repertoire the stuff that is there i'm i very keen to follow and uh, yeah right so you sort of classify as a baritone right yeah the the uh, the uh, sound of my voice is is more baritone uh, i the range is is a little bit higher now i mean i'm sort of uh, sound the range is more like a lower tenor uh, not not a very high tenor but lower tenor but the sound and the tone of my voice is more a baritone so i, I would classify it as as a baritone but i mean i think while in classical music there are the specific you know very specific uh, lines drawn i think with modern music sometimes you just you shouldn't uh, those lines are not very relevant you as long as you are able to sing what what you what you're singing um, right. so the the sound of the voice is definitely baritone right because uh, i i uh, i was sort of like you know reading about this and i i saw that like uh, the singers like elvis presley eddie vedder those guys are actually also baritones right yeah i mean i love eddie vedder i mean he is one of my favorite favorite singers <laughs> uh yeah they are they are baritones uh they are baritones so yeah that's that's the, the the sound of their voice right uh if you take for example someone like like uh, uh, freddie mercury or uh, maybe even chris cornell right so they are more higher their register is, is higher like there right. is uh, like eddie vedder and you know even elvis elvis presley they sound you know their their the sound of their voice is deeper and darker the darker tone mm. uh, so that's that's i guess in a way uh, i mean and it's, it's natural it's not something that that they put on or try to do it's it's naturally how their voice sounds so yeah that's that is correct that right. they have no bad tones yeah right so uh, regarding classical music what what sort of uh, you know i mean of course you you have the talent but uh, what what really attracted to the you know p- for you to pursue the classical music side yeah i mean i uh, the the thing is uh, classical music has a lot of like deep like uh, intrinsic lot of uh, sort of it's almost technical but very you know uh, it's very sophisticated in the, in the way that it it uh, weaves music and connects music together and this is this is actually something that classical music has in common with a lot of uh, metal uh, especially the progressive and there the okay with metal okay you have the the, the guitars and the, the bass where so metal probably has fewer instruments and classical music you know often you have the big orchestra but uh, all of them have uh, b- both of those genres have a level of sophistication in the music that appeal to me and uh, with classical music especially the more the uh, i mean i i like a lot of compositions from even the very old uh, uh, com- composers like mozart but the more modern ones like like puccini mm. and uh, those guys they have very nice uh, very uh, very deep melodies which really allow allow a singer to sort of express and uh, express themselves very well and and it's challenging it's not easy to perform it's uh, difficult to sing which makes it it good so not it's not everyone can't do it i mean even i struggle with certain things so you know i'm still learning certain things uh, so uh, and you know there are people who study music i mean of classical music you know for years in 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 schools of music and you know, they are they are pro at it but you know i'm i would classify myself more amateur in compared to those guys but 
it's uh, it's a it's a sophisticated form of music which is very fulfilling to be able to perform and it sounds great even to for for people who who uh, who listen uh, who listen to it and of course i mean you get the composers like like beethoven whose music is timeless right i mean even though he wrote it like centuries ago even today like you take his moonlight sonata you get so many people you know covering it and mm. uh, like metal bands playing it and uh, uh, people so his music is 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 really timeless and you know his ninth symphony fifth symphony those things have have uh, they resonate and you know even though they were composed centuries ago they are still today they are very relevant and it can move people so i think classical music has the capability of moving people and uh, it has the musical sophistication so i was really drawn to that and i think it it depends on what people really enjoy and what they're exposed to so because i was exposed to a lot of things i think i am able to sort of appreciate these things uh, in a certain right. way yeah. <laughs> because they uh, they they say that uh, classical music was uh, metal before electricity right <laughs> yeah that's right because I mean, if if, uh, if be, uh, beethoven were alive today and you know if he were to have the the capability of composing for you know these electric guitars and for you know keyboards and and all these things and and all that stuff i mean i'm sure they would have utilized it so they did what they had to do with the instruments that they had at the time right so and now the modern day musicians they work with the instruments they have now so i mean it's it's a different time but i think uh, if you take a lot of com- compositions i think the closest that uh, that uh, music like beethoven and you know those guys the closest that they have the closest peers that they have in terms of sophistication i think is is metal there are certain there are some very good some fantastic contemporary classical composers who write some amazing stuff but i think they've not really been able to sort of push their music uh, strongly enough for enough people to hear it mm. so that's unfortunate but i mean there are definitely some very good uh, contemporary classical composers but metal which has sort of permeated and sort of gone and it you wouldn't say mainstream but so many people listen to it has a very deep sense of sophistication and it gives you an idea that i mean that people like that sophistication and they like to hear you know complex uh, guitar melodies you know complex uh, grooves and time signatures and all those things right so uh, sanjeev so you were part of uh, the band stone broke which was sort of a i i feel that it it's a certain generation of like tigmata whirlwind and stone broke and paranoid earth thing those bands um i think early 2000s and late 1990s yes. and early yeah. 2000s you were part of yeah. this generation of bringing the rock so original music rock music yeah, yeah. in sri lanka right yeah. so can you tell me a little bit about how the stone band stone broke uh, started yeah so we were uh... friends so me and my my best friend and then a couple of other guys so uh, we were in school and so we always like like you know we always like music so at that time uh, the rock music thing i mean the rock music that we heard was prime primarily what was played on tnl on tnl radio at that time they had some good music they had a show called spinning unrest yeah i think uh, anil uh, did that show uh, so you know we heard a lot of music and tnl i mean i think you could even request some quite stuff which they wouldn't play anymore Um, some nice music so we we really enjoyed it and we liked we really liked that music and we knew that you know we had sort of capability my friend could play the guitar i could sing and you know we could we could do something uh, interesting and so we we wanted to start something and we were inspired by by bands like uh, independent square and stigmata who were doing uh, original music and so we we really wanted to write our own music because we had some really good ideas and you know we were you know sort of jamming on an acoustic guitar we had some some interesting ideas for songs so then you know then tnl on stage was happening so we thought you know targeting this let's uh, let's uh, you know start this thing up and let's let's perform in front of a, a crowd and you know let's try and focus on that and so that's how we that was our first real uh, we did a, some very small public uh, gigs before but then you know, that was our first sort of major uh, public uh, performance in appearance so we we focused on on that so we we had written a couple of songs and we played it i mean i don't think we were very we were very good uh, at on stage compared to how we improved later mm. uh, so in our first so we were in the qualifying round we were with stigmata and paranoid earthly uh, so you know those two they were phenomenal I mean, stigmata was next level and even paranoid earthly was was very very good at that time even at that time uh, 
Mm. And but then uh, then after that, you know, the rock company happened, and then we started being able to play more regularly. So we were practicing more often, and then we improved, and we wrote some some uh, better songs, and we really were able to step it up to the next level. And then uh, we were very young at that time, so we were like nineteen, twenty, twenty-one years old. And then you know, sort of life sort of took over. My friends went abroad, and so then sort of you know things didn't. Uh, move from there but we had some some very interesting times where we did some really uh, some shows which i really enjoyed and did, um, with rock company they had the monthly shows in colombo and they also toured once in a so the show that you talked about to katunaika then uh, we, we played once in nuarelia which was awesome that was amazing uh, by gregory lake we played uh, a show that was uh, that was really cool it was freezing cold uh, and uh, yeah so that that was that was really nice so that that was how sort of the band started and progressed yeah so rock company was a <clears throat> major part of that uh, sort of revolution yeah. right yeah i mean if 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 they weren't there i mean that obviously would have happened right so they they really uh, got things organized uh, mr ajit and i think his uh, uh, i think his brothers i think mr rohan was his name uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah so they were uh, they were hugely instrumental in getting that moving and it it gave us a lot of exposure and it gave a lot of other bands a lot of exposure so uh, it was really you know uh, and i think people really liked those shows the people who came to watch them so it was uh, it was really cool yeah because i i used to travel me and my brother we used to travel all the way from nigambo to see the rock up any shows so uh-huh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i don't think we missed uh, any shows while like okay. during those years <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah amazing times actually really <laughs> memorable times right yeah yeah definitely <laughs> uh, i want to show you something you remember sure. this one oh yes yes of course <laughs> So you have your song here, right? What you are? Yeah, that was the the first song that we wrote. Uh, what you are? So that was, uh, yeah, that was that's actually the un- unfortunately the only song that we were able to record. Right. So uh, yeah, that's on this, and that had that this uh, has some amazing songs. I mean, I think Paranoid Earthling has a song, Pull Me Under. Yeah. Uh, that's on that, and Stigma to ex- Stigma to Extinction. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah. Uh, yeah. I also have the second one as well. They had they had a second uh-huh. compilation as well. Did you guys put out an EP back then? Or uh, no, 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 we couldn't. We, we we couldn't record the rest of our music. You know, things sort of, as I told you, life took over, and you know, people had other priorities, and you know, things sort of uh, <laughs> move forward. But we we started recording. So we had this really nice song called Invictus, uh, and another song called Realm of Sorrow. So uh, Invictus, we weren't able to record. We we really wanted to record it. I mean, so then we had this other song called Realm of Sorrow. Uh, so that song also uh, so we had actually the privilege of having you know pabalu right pabalu which you know more than he was he's the drama of uh, trilok trilok okay. um, so he played with us for some time and he was amazing he was an amazing addition to the band addition to the band because he's a more eastern percussionist so he brought that brought that vibe into his drumming and that really sort of boosted uh, how we sounded and we played some of our best gigs with him so uh, this song realm of sorrow Uh, uh again we weren't able to record it but recently i uh, collaborated with tenny from uh, from stigmata and uh, realm of, uh, some very important parts of the song of song realm of sorrow from the stone broke days i i took and took it and added and included it in this in my original song called all earth shall cry and uh, that was uh, and uh, included it there so that at, at least you know some important parts of the stone broke music is is kept yeah. alive uh, yeah. right <clears throat> so um going to your sort of original uh, sort of classical com- uh, composition so when did you started uh, what was your like first release what song did you first wrote or di- on the classical side yes so uh, there were a couple of songs that i wrote on my own but the first thing that really moved uh, moved forward was the collaboration i did with suresh uh, from sigma this one song was called cadence of your tears mm. uh, so this one we did it in 2015 so uh he he uh acted in uh, jesus christ superstar i think that was in 2014 i think and uh, then you know i connected with him you know i mean we had lost touch after for some time because i mean we used to follow sigma ta closely those days but then we had lost touch for some time and then i reached out to him and then you know he said you know uh, why don't we do a, an original song together and there was this melody that i had in mind this melody which i sort of 
sort of just you know uh, roughly played with the piano so i just recorded a just a rough demo of the melody and i sent it to him and he said this is great and then uh, i went to his place and we sat together and we wrote the lyrics uh, so he wrote a majority of the lyrics uh, and i also contributed to some of the lyrics and then you know we, it was sounding really good so there were these harmonies and stuff so that was the the first real uh, original that that i that i uh, worked on as a full full work and then we released in 2015 and we did a proper video for it in 2016 <clears throat> right and uh, i think that uh, that music video had great response right yeah that's right so uh, it's a it's a very interesting music video so it has uh, we put a lot of effort into making it making sure it works so there was this uh, really really good uh, film directress called nilmini perera who uh, she really liked the song and she was really happy to work on this vid- on the video so she directed the video so there was a really good response and also we submitted it to some film fest independent film festivals for best music video so in two us uh, film festivals it got nominated for best music video one was uh, the new york film festival and the other one was the los angeles cinefest mm. so those two it was it was uh, nominated for best music video so that was i thought pretty phenomenal because you know we really put a lot of effort and worked hard into getting that uh, getting that right. done um sanjeev another song that i really li- liked well, from your youtube channel is uh, let there be darkness okay <laughs> can you tell me what's the inspiration for that song yeah i think uh, it's uh, it's sort of uh, some someone coming to terms with uh, with separation right that okay it's uh, it that something that was there before is no longer there uh, uh, the the separation from something that that was dear to you or some some something or someone that was dear to you and then that you're coming to terms with that and that you're you're you know uh, living with that that you sort of realize that this is you know what you have to uh, what you have to move forward with and so i but i uh, but my most of my music i mean i i see a lot of personal incidents you know with different people i know and i they and those things sort of moved me to write some of my music so i i i mean this is something that one of my uh, one of my friends was going through and i i sort of understood uh, the 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 sort of uh, the pain and the you know and the struggle and finally the coming to terms with the with the reality uh, that that they were going through and so that that sort of is what fra- what uh, enabled me to 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 get the the concept behind the uh, the lyrics and of course the lyrics i mean the melody was was the for me the melody is the most important thing in the in the music so that melody also was something that that focused on that that theme uh, yeah right <clears throat> yeah and uh, so you you uh, collaborated with suresh of stigmata and then also you did the song with tenny as well right the guitarist of yes, stigmata yes. all of yeah, chalk yeah, right yes yeah. so, all of chalk <laughs> yes Yeah. so that was re- that was really something that i was looking forward to because i wanted to uh, because guitars is a very underutilized uh, instrument in the classical music uh, genre right? right especially like elect- okay you may have this the, the acoustic but the electric guitars is almost you know non existent so i wanted to uh, because i think that the the electric guitar can you know work really well with orchestral instruments and with with the general you know class the a feel of a classical of a new classical music uh, sort of a piece so that's why i wanted to bring it in and tenny came up with this amazing solo so i had written the written the melody and you know we sort of decided on a certain passage where the the solo would be and he played this he sent me this this demo of an amazing solo which he had recorded and i was like oh man i mean don't change a note of this let's record this and let's let's do this so It, and then he he recorded some amazing you know fills on on the stuff there while I was singing so that was uh, that was a really great experience to work with him yeah i mean what i love about tenny because i've seen him done uh, doing this so many amazing compositions with so many different collaborations and stuff and yeah, yeah. but when you talk to him he's like just uh, he doesn't really take that very seriously right he's like <laughs> yeah yeah he is he is uh, i mean humble to a, a different level uh, i mean he's he was uh, really i mean really helpful he went out of his way for this song and with so many other things in my music he's been very helpful so he's a really nice guy and and the thing is i mean it's 
I when I especially I mean anywhere I know how how talented he is because I've seen him play live and all that. But when I went to record with him uh, and I was in the in the studio with him, I realized you know how skilled and talented this guy is. Even though he's like a super humble, like you know you you meet him, you would know that he would right. he would be able to play the guitar. He's uh, he's an amazing guitarist, and I mean I haven't seen someone play live. and play such complex stuff on the guitar and still be sort of you know head bagging and you're jumping about on the stage and have such an amazing uh, he's he's a extremely talented uh, guitarist you have to admit that right so sanjeev what's your thoughts on how stigmata is actually celebrating their 21 years uh, this year right so yeah. so ha- have I have seen them like we you know very early in their career and then now uh, seeing where they are uh what's your sort of thoughts and message to sigma yeah i mean these guys have in my view they've been the band that's uh not just been the flag bearer for metal it's been they have been the flag bearer for original english music in sri lanka regardless of the genre mm. because before they came there was no one who was seriously focusing okay there were a couple of bands who did original music but the kind of uh, effort that they put into it and of course the kind of skill that they had as musicians helped them to like really do it at a, at a different level uh, made you know sort of set this this path i mean i wouldn't be able to do my music i mean as as stone group we wouldn't have had the band i wouldn't be able to do my music now if they didn't make this uh, path so um, sometimes when you are the you know the guy who sort of you know breaks the boundaries and creates the path you don't get all the accolades that you should or you don't get or probably get all the commercial success that you should but um, i mean they are the ones who sort of created the path for an entire industry and uh, they need to be lauded and appreciated for that and the fact that they're still playing and they're still playing playing really well and and i mean in my i mean there are many bands now i mean there weren't as many bands those days uh, in my view i mean there's still probably you know i mean they are up there if not you know there are the original music for me still is unmatched in sri lanka mm-hmm. uh, i don't know any other bands who do as good original music as has original music as and that may be just my opinion but so i think you know they have sort of flag bearers and you know they they folk they they have a lot of you know Uh, barriers in their way. Uh, people criticized them. People laughed at them. Uh, band members left, mm. and so many different things. But they've, you know, sort of focused and they've uh, stayed true to what their uh, their vision was. And it's 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 amazing what they have achieved. And what what's mm. very important that people understand is that it's not always about how much money you make and how much commercial success that you have. sometimes the your success the success is defined in, in a different way so, so there may be someone who makes an amazing amount of money you know playing covers and you know going and playing at weddings and all that i mean all oh, that's great that that's a that's a different scene and you do that and that's fine but to achieve this kind of success to actually have built up an industry through you know primarily primarily almost by themselves and uh, to still hold strong for so long and be releasing now working on their fifth album i think that's you know that's that's real success and when they look back you know at, at some point when they look back on their careers they would say yeah you know we did everything that we could to do what we love and i mean mm. you couldn't you couldn't ask for anything more really. yeah right <clears throat> um i really love sanjeev that uh... you uh, you were doing some of some covers like you did a disturb cover uh, so and queen and uh, all these different songs and you you put it out in a in your way that which is really uh, uh, i really love when artists do these things like you remember that back in the day uh, chris cornell was doing like michael jackson's billy jean uh, you know sort of different yeah. interpretation so yeah. i really yeah. love what you're doing so uh any any covers that you wa- really want to do uh, in the future <laughs> uh, yeah yeah definitely i mean there are there are certain things which i have my eye on so i am uh, actually my uh, so uh, 
my uh, singing skills i mean the, i have i have no, no no problem with it i mean sure there are maybe things that i can improve but my i'm one thing that i'm really working hard on is my like piano playing skills so that's not uh, i still have to really improve on that so i'm working hard on that so with that there are certainly some covers that i want to uh, want to improve i mean right now i haven't thought i mean i did uh, the disturbed cover and then uh, i think recently i did uh, uh, sri lankan artist who i really like kasun kalhar he has mm-hmm. a really nice song called romantic opera i did that one so uh, there are definitely i mean i will definitely be in the coming months be putting out uh, uh, some some stuff so there will be some things that i will perform live at this next show on saturday and uh, so there i mean i will uh, also do some be doing some recordings so i haven't really uh, 100% you know fix my eye on specific things but there are certain things which are on my radar and i'm working on and figuring out how to how to you know really make it work right about the uh, the song of uh, romantic opera by kasun kalhar i mean yeah kasun kalhar is also like i mean covering something from him is a it's it's big shoes to fill right <laughs> yeah especially i mean sri lankan fans his fans are very uh, devoted and dedicated to him so it's very right. important that you the thing is i wanted to do it in my style but i wanted to make sure that you know that it uh, that I, that the tribute is paid to the to the song right uh, so it, it it's not easy but uh, he's definitely i mean uh, he's probably my favorite sri lankan singer is music artist uh, and uh, this is one i think definitely my favorite song of his uh so i wanted to do justice to it but at the same time i wanted to do it more in in do it like i would do it and how it would sound if, if i i did right. it. uh did you share that with kasun kalhar <laughs> did, did, did. Uh, i haven't really been able to get in touch with him uh, i will i will try uh, so i need to see <laughs> yeah i think he's busy these days with voice yeah with the voice yeah that's right <laughs> right so uh I also know, I also saw that you you did a you you composed the music for a short film uh, two months yeah yeah so this uh, short film again this is the the uh, the film director of my of uh, the music video for cadence of your tears so she was doing a short film so this was a very sort of a deep dark subject about child abuse uh, in in sri lanka and you know how how poverty and child abuse of uh, sort of uh, are huge issues so this was a very you know a dark script uh, so uh, she gave me the script first uh, before she sent me the, the anything with the, anything with the recording of the movie and so i read it and then i initially came up with a, a theme like the general theme of what the music but in my mind this 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 uh, this script brings uh, brings in uh, brings to my mind and then she had recorded the 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 movie itself and the and the, she had a rough edit and then we i sat with her and then we said okay to what sections are we going to add a certain passages of music and we decided that and then you know we i composed some specific passages for certain things and so this this movie is i mean i, I think it's it's a really it's a phenomenal uh, it's a short film so i think it's like 10 to 15 minutes mm-hmm. um, so uh, it's done really well so a lot of uh, uh, film festivals especially in south asia have recognized it and even outside like even in turkey argentina and stuff but in south asia especially uh, even in the sri lanka there are two major music uh, sorry uh, film festivals agenda 14 and the jaffna film festival have screened it and uh, also it got uh, best uh, best uh, short film at some certain uh, film festivals and also at uh, rajasthan film festival in india it got best uh, best score for the music so that was it was that was really uh, pleasing to be able to achieve that so that that was a really good experience and i hope i am able to do more of that you know with time with uh, certain uh, uh, with film music it's something that i that i really enjoy doing and i would i would do it in a heart with okay right so what sort of uh, differences between like writing a song that you will put out and uh and then writing mu- music for a movie what what sort of uh yeah the, so the the, the song the song that i would put out is completely in you know it's it's what i would think it should be right i would de- decide what the theme of it would be what you know uh what uh, what i wanted to sound like but when you're talking about a movie i mean and especially a movie that someone else has has directed someone else's storyline 
you have to do it for that, right? So you have to, I mean, so this was a quite a dark, uh, dark uh, storyline. So that helped because my music is more, uh, more dark and more on the, uh, it's, uh, it, it is more themed in, in that way. So you have to, you have to follow the, the, the storyline and the, the, the emotions that the movie takes you through, your music has to follow. So, I mean, the great, uh, film composers like you know Hans Zimmer and John Williams. I mean Hans Zimmer says in a in a movie, the when you're watching a movie, the music and the pictures that you see and the words that you hear should all become one. When you're watching a movie, if you're watching a movie especially for the first time, you never think about the music. The music is always there, but it you never think about it. But it's there. And it's guiding your emotions at times. You know, it's making, it's building suspense, it's creating sadness, it's showing happiness. But the music is there. Maybe when you watch the movie second or third time, you think, ah, okay, this uh, I can hear this music here. But good film music is always, you know, music which which is one with the with the movie itself, with the sound and the pictures that you see and uh, the things which are being said. Uh, so that's very important. So that's not it's not easy to achieve, but it is. So it is very different, I think, to writing a song of your own. It has to be something that is. Uh, it the music in a movie has to complement the movie to a T. That's the I think the important thing. Right. I was actually thinking like, uh, if all these like you know all these favorite music favorite movies that we love, like for example, like Godfather, if there was no music in that movie, it will be. Quite a yeah, different yeah, exactly. thing, right? And, I mean, uh, the the uh, movies which you love and you watch, you know, a couple of times, then you start thinking about the music. Ah, this has some nice music and stuff. But always, when you watch it the first time, you never, no one will ever think that oh, the music was fantastic. That means something is wrong with the movie. That means either the, you know it looked shit or it didn't, you know, they were the script was not good, so that you were focusing on the music instead. But if the movie, if the movie is good and the music is good, you would, you know, the movie would move you. And the music would have been an important part of it, but you never would have thought about for the music uh, individually as separate. Right. So Sanjeev, so you, uh, you, so you are uh, performing on the next uh, next show of uh, Surya Brothers, uh, right? Yes. Can you tell me about the show? Yeah. So uh, it's going to be next Saturday at, at the Otters Club. Uh, I think it starts at at, at six. Uh, so it's uh, some really good bands. I mean, Rainmaker. Uh, Mantel God, uh, Genetic Fallacy. Uh, I think I'm missing one. Yeah, so the, these bands up and I'm playing myself. So my act is going to be a little bit. I mean, I'm not uh, a heavy metal band. I'm. It's just going to be me on my on my keyboard. So it's going to be a different kind of performance compared to the others. Uh, so it's it's going to be interesting. I think uh, I will do some of my original music and some important covers which I love to do and so that that's going to be I'm really looking forward to it I'm, I'm rehearsing these days and practicing and trying to get make sure that I'm you know, in a good shape for the show uh, so yeah that's that's uh, that's what's going to happen I'm really looking forward to it and I hope you know, people right. come and enjoy it so uh, Sanjeev so um, I mean of course now there's a big following for rock and metal and uh, of course the mainstream is always there's so many people listening to that but become being a, like a classical artist and uh, sort of how is it in, being a classical artist in Sri Lanka? So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think I would be quite a different classical. I mean, there are classical artists in Sri Lanka uh, who are sort of connected with uh, sort of important uh, classical music establishment, uh, uh, like things like choirs and mm. orchestras and, you know, certain specific uh, institutions. Um, so I am not deeply connected with those. So my my journey is more independent. Right. So I mean, the the sound of my music is classical. The sound of my singing is classical, but my music is more contemporary uh, with you know strong classical influences. Right. So uh, and I think people from different genres are attracted to it. So there is a gen. There is definitely a following that's being being built up. I mean, it's not. Uh, um, uh, I wouldn't say a, a massive following, but I think there is certainly a lot of lot of interest, and people have really been moved by uh, the original music that I've done and by certain covers which I have which I have done as well. Uh, so uh, it's it's definitely a journey into the unknown a little bit. 
so sometimes i sort of uh, have to have to feel around as to you know how uh, who who is how do i in, uh, improve the uh, improve the people that uh, the the numbers of people that hear my music because i think once people hear my music then they are they you know they they a large majority of them like it Uh, but to get more people to hear it is the challenge because you know in this sort of one thing is it's not easy you have to have you know high budgets for promotion and stuff but i think there is a slowly increasing uh, movement and following which uh, which i i really love everyone who is uh, who's you know contributed even who says you know gives a small word of encouragement or who gives a, a like or a, or a comment or a share on on the social media posts they are, they are making a huge difference for me and for my music and i mean it would be for any independent artist so it's not easy it's 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 a bit different to the standard you know classical institutional uh, the classical music establishment institutions which are there in sri lanka it's it's mm-hmm. a different path and uh, yeah so it's it's a journey and i'm, I'm working hard at it right um so sanji what's your message to people who support you yeah i mean i'm i am blessed to have people that support me i think uh, uh, the fans that support me are definitely you know uh, they have they have a lot of them have been have been wonderful regardless of whether you know they they may love one song they may not love another song but they've always been supportive and helpful so i i really uh, there's no words to express how much i appreciate their support and there have been other people who have you know supported me in a huge way like you know Uh, my close family and there are specific people like in suresh and tani and uh, these guys and some of my close friends who have uh, played you know a very big part in helping me and making uh, uh, making a big contribution to to because keeping me encouraged because it's not something that i'm uh, at the moment at least uh, earning any commercial success with it's something that i'm it's more you know i'm getting the getting the word out there getting my music out there and uh, so it's not easy so i need all the all the encouragement and the support that i can get and i'm i'm massively grateful to everyone who who provides that support and i'm really thankful to you for you know having uh, getting me uh, uh, for enabling me to come and speak on your show uh, it's a real real privilege you have some amazing artists on your show so uh, so it's it's uh, it's i think step by step journey and uh, i'm focused on on you know going as as far as i possibly can and pushing this as far as i possibly can uh, so i'm i'm very thankful to everyone uh, and you know just keep keep supporting i mean whoever can you know come for uh, come for the 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 show on saturday please come you can follow me on my social media i have uh, my social media facebook uh, and instagram uh, and uh, youtube so I have my youtube channels you can subscribe to my youtube channel and see the new music that i put out and uh, also you know a lot of updates on my on my social media as well so that would be great if if uh, people who who uh, want to hear hear what i do if you can check it out and if you like it please uh, follow the social media channels that would be fantastic right so your social media is all sanjeev niles right uh yeah for youtube and facebook yes for instagram it's sanjeev niles official right so sanjeev the uh, i am really glad that we did this uh, conversation i really enjoyed talking to you and really glad that we connected back again after so many years <laughs> <laughs> so keep making uh, you know great music and then um, thank you for joining the podcast right thanks thanks a lot chandra for having me and uh, it's been a privilege uh, thank, you. thank you <laughs> thank you have a great okay, day okay thanks yeah you too okay <laughs>